Okay. <clears throat> Today is Sunday, uh, October the 9th. October the 9th. Um, just to update anybody and everybody who's interested in what's going on, we had uh, our first appointment with the specialist on uh, Friday, Friday the 7th. And uh, basically, gosh, I don't even know what to say. Um, he said he said we the next step was to get an MRI. Uh, they want to look at the spot on Chuck's liver and see what's happening with that spot because his his uh, health is deteriorating so rapidly. They think maybe uh, there may be uh, cancer in the liver. So we're going to have an MRI done on the 27th to take a better look at that spot. We talked about this uh, this three drug cocktail that uh, was talked about earlier, you know, as treating this cirrhosis. And basically, this guy, after looking at at, at Chuck's case more closely, said that. That cocktail was basically, he was too far advanced for that anyway. He was just too far along for that. And uh, that was really no big deal to us because uh, Chuck was in the hospital this past week and his roommate, who has been living with cirrhosis most of his life, actually endured this, this treatment. And he said it was a series of injections that you give yourself on a weekly basis. And he said it absolutely made him nuts, uh, made him into a homicidal, suicidal maniac. So needless to say, uh, we weren't too disappointed that it was too late for that and that Chuck had really originally turned that down. So anyway, uh, we also talked about a procedure that um, I guess it's common with patients that have cirrhosis to have these the bleeding in the throat, like in the esophagus, the way that the bacteria backs up and everything, and they end up with these like ulcers in the esophagus. And so they do the, they put the scope down the throat, and there's stage one, two, and three of this particular situation. And stage one and two, they treat it with medication. Stage three, they actually band these ulcers off to try to shrink them and keep them under control. So the specialist, Dr. Witta, he talked about having that procedure done, and uh, we said, of course, we'd think about it, and uh, we'd, we figured we'd wait until after the MRI anyway, and let's see what the MRI reveals. <coughs> so the next trip over there is going to be uh, the week before the MRI. He has to do a lot of blood work. They want to take a lot of blood out of him for various reasons. And then on the 27th is the MRI, and the doctor said we'll know a lot more from looking at that MRI. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Chuck was uh, hospitalized on Wednesday because we went in uh, just for some consultation of some sort or maybe some blood work, I don't remember, and they pretty much took one look at him and they admitted him. Uh, as you know, he was carrying like 60 pounds of excess fluid on him, and we kind of, that was out of control. So we had to get some of that fluid off, and uh, they kept him overnight. And the first attempt at doing this uh, paracentesis is when they stick a needle in the abdomen, try to draw out some of that fluid. Well, the first attempt was uh, not good. Uh, they hit the wrong spot, and Chuck was very nervous and very upset. And so the next morning, uh, they got ready to try it again, and they did an ultrasound to find the good spot to hit, which was on the other side of his belly. And then the doctor sometime after two or three in the afternoon finally came and they drew the fluid out, put a long needle into his belly, which he didn't like at all. He was very nervous and upset about it, but he did okay. And it took a couple of hours, but he drained off about nine liters of fluid. And uh, needless to say, there was a lot of relief and he lost about 20 pounds just by staying in the hospital for two nights. So. Uh, right now he's resting comfortably and uh, he's just feeling a little weak and you know we're just dealing with all the information uh, the doctor talked about you know how long he might have to live and different situations with different patients and whatnot and so uh, 
It was pretty rough on, on us on Friday to go and see him, but we finally saw the specialist, and uh, the next step is the MRI and, and taking a better look at the liver and to find out if, you know, he may indeed have some kind of a cancer in there. Anyway, so right now it's just all about keeping him comfortable and just, you know, dealing with all of this information and just taking it one day at a time like everybody has told me to do. I know everybody's praying for us and, and being really supportive, and we really appreciate that because that's what we need right now. We need all the support that you people can give us. So uh, with that, I'll just say goodbye for now, and I'll keep you updated as soon as I get the results from the MRI and we find out one way or another exactly what's going on. So for now, I'll see you later. Okay, this clip is for anybody who wonders if I ever get out of the house and get away from it all, get away from the stress, the worry, and the care of what I'm dealing with recently. Well, this is what I do to get out of the house and just to unwind and relax. And that's me riding on my bike. And I love my bicycle. I love the beautiful scenery. I get to ride around it. Just have a look. It's just beautiful. And now, of course, with my MP3 player and listening to the songs that I've chosen, I can get lost in the music and I can really enjoy it. He's a God. Of course, you can't, you can't hear the music, so it's not going to sound as good to you, but with this music in my ears, my voice sounds fantastic. Oh, goodness. <laughs>